Hello, this is Dr. Tony Nalda here. I'm talking to you regarding our cool down phase and spinal correction. Today we're talking about the passive molding and really the benefits it has in helping changing the spine. So first there's a couple of things that we have to understand, some basic terms. First thing is there's three types of care. First type of care is it's going to be active care. This is where the, pain sh the patient is consciously participating in the activity or motion. This is very, very common used in our set phase during our isometrics very conscious contraction of a specific muscle or exercise that we want the patient to perform. Next thing is something called a reactive type of care. This is where the patient's unconsciously participating in the activity or motion. This is our body weighting, our neuromuscular retraining. This is where the patient is reacting to a load or force that we put on them. And the third type of care is something called passive. Passive where a patient is not participating in the type of in the mov movement at all. This is where a load or force is slowly moving or passively moving this body for them. Passive care has a very, very unique component and also has its unique benefits. Let's go over those. So there's a couple concepts we have to understand. First thing is deformation of tissue. We know that the body can change in form and we know that. We know the form of a structure can change, especially when it comes to the spine. Because we know we see spines, we take extra to them, and they're not the way they started. So they know, we know they changed in form over a period of time. This deformation can occur a couple different ways. But first thing we have to understand is that your body has the ability to have a stretch reflex. It has a visioelastic stretch reflex, kind of like a spring. All tissues have the ability to reflex back. So if you get a spring and you spring it out and you let go of it, it's going to go back. That's the ability for your body to do. It has like a stretch or a spring reflex back into it. Kind of like this memory foam is a great example. You push in this memory foam, it makes a hand imprint, and then as you let go, the handprint will be there for a second, but then it kind of goes away. That's visioelastic stretch reflex. Your body can spring back. However, there is something called plasticity. Plasticity is when we have a permanently deformed tissue when it's loaded beyond its elastic range. If you load tissue beyond its ability to spring back, it will deform. It has no other choice. Now, the problem is this plasticity can happen one of two ways. It can happen with slow, sustained pressure, or it can actually happen with a quick dynamic pressure. Now, with ligaments, at a greater than 40% of its ability to bear a load, we know ligaments will stretch and tear. So a force 40% greater than its than the ligament's ability to hold or resist or stretch back will cause deform deformation of that ligament. Now plasticity can also help me occur from a sustained force over a long period of time. So it's kind of like getting a spring, stretching it all the way out, and stretching it so far that it can no longer stretch back. That's when we have plastic deformity or plastic elonga elongation of that spring. Clay is a great material to, sh to exhibit plasticity. You push on clay, it does not come back. Right? That's plasticity. Now, we have something called creep. Creep is your ability to change tissue, not with a very quick load, but a very sustained load. We know we can change tissues with a sustained load at least over 15 minutes of time. We know subluxation occurs both ways. It occurs with very, very quick, quick loads and very sustained loads over a long period of time or repetitive loads over a long period of time. We want to use both those forces to help correct the spine. Both those forces to help correct the spine. If we can do that, we'll get very quick correction in a very short period of time. So the instructions, most molding is done for 20 minutes once per day. We want to break that 15 minute threshold. Can you do it twice? Absolutely, but at least once. Prescribe only one type of molding in addition to the sleep aids. We don't want to be doing pelvic rotation blocking, posterior T12, and sleep aids. It's too much. Just stick with one plus the sleep aids. Make sure that everything matches each other. Mix, fix, and set molding for the same subluxation pattern. Those four things for the same subluxation pattern will provide a very quick change in an area. Then I put that on area on maintenance, and then I focus on another area to create the same type of change. So remember, make sure all those things match. Sleep aids are the only type of molding designed to sleep on. You don't want to be sleeping on 
pelvic wedging or posterior T12 and whatnot because that's going to get those forces are a little bit stronger than the sleep aids we want the sleep aids to be lasting for a long period of time now the funny part is always I is saying that creep can occur 15 to 20 minutes we can already start getting some deformation of the tissue now imagine if you had a perfect lordosis in that person's spine for six to eight hours using a sleep aid do you think that would provide great benefit to help restoring the cervical lordosis you absolutely will and understand there's only one thing that actually speeds up when somebody sleeps and that is the nerve system the nerve system is the only system that speeds up while you sleep or every other system slows down so we want to make sure the nerve system is absolutely in the proper position remember there's a few rules people under five feet can use that small roll for their cervical spine but however the majority of people are going to use their large roll even some people around five feet or five four can still use a lot I mean, a couple of inches under five feet can still use that large roll. But just make sure that you check it to make sure their head isn't fully extending and their head's actually be able to touch the surface if they're using that large roll under their neck. Don't use a lumbar roll for anterior L5. Okay, we don't want to creep that anterior L5 any more anterior. Unless they have a posterior T12, then you can move it up to T12 to correct that posterior T12 very, very, very slightly in that area. People who have pain, you can start with a small roll in the cervical area and graduate to the large roll. However, most people can handle it, even once they even have neck pain. You can experience some numbing and tingling during new use. If you do, you can discontinue use for that time and again restart again tomorrow. It's not that, I mean, I feel a little bit of numbing and tingling at times when I do it. I think it's just part of the change process that's occurring to the spine. Now, I have created a video for patients to actually watch so they can actually understand what they're getting in their home care package. So go ahead and watch this video and then I'll be here to finish up with you in a few seconds. Hello, this is Dr. Tony Nolly here. I'm talking to you regarding your home blocking package. Today we're focusing specifically on the spinal molding. Now the spinal molding is a very powerful tool to help, help, help restructure your spine, help reduce your subluxation pattern. When you get your package, it comes with a couple different components. First thing you have these two triangles. Now these triangles are specifically designed to help reduce pelvic rotation, help through some thoracic or some mid-back blocking. Uh, they're very powerful and they're very firm, they're very firm. So these are designed to shoot, use as more of a short term, 20 to 30 minutes tops, and then you kind of work yourself off the off this blocking. Now the, the most important pieces, I think, are these two um, rolls that we have here. And these are called your cervical, your cervical and your lumbar sleep aids. These are designed to use for a very long term. They're very, so, they're very much softer. They're not as firm, but they apply, apply a very sustained pressure for a long period of time. These are designed, to, again, to use while you sleep. And the idea of this is to gain slow change in your spine for a long period of time, four, six, eight hours. Now, it's very commonly when you use these and you start to use them, you can feel some discomfort. You can feel a little bit of numbness from your occiput. You can also feel some numbness in your fingers. You may even feel some soreness in the back of your neck or your low back. It's very common as you're adapting to using these rolls over a period of time. But just stick with it. Work yourself slowly over time. So you start up 20 minutes, add 10, 15, 20 minutes. Every single night you use them, you're slowly be able to go two or three or four hours. Now, there's a medium and a firm. Now, the majority of the time, almost every single patient starts off with a medium and they'll work themselves up to a firm. But your doctor is going to give you your prescription. Make sure you follow exactly what he tells you to do. And the last thing you'll get is some rolls, uh, roll covers. These roll covers are just designed to use over the top of the rolls to make them a little softer, a little bit more, um, a little bit more pleasing while you're, while you're sleeping on them. When you hit your tolerance point, so let's say you go two hours and then you can't be on these anymore. What's, your, what's the idea? Then you just use whatever pillow that you're using and go ahead and use that for the rest of the night. But go as long as you can go. Um, most people can work themselves up to four to six hours after a period of six to nine months. So that's your goal. It's not trying to get it all done in one shot. It's to slowly kind of get there and slowly begin to remodel your spine. It has a very powerful effect in helping holding your adjustments and help remodeling your, the structure of your spine. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how passive molding works and how it's effective. I believe if you use all the types of care and all the tools that we have in order to change the spine, I believe that you can get very, very quick correction in the spine, get spines to change relatively fast on pre and post films, you may get better results than you've ever had.